Moving on. So knowing Sean that you would have cloned an instance like with requirements, and I'm just going to jump to this requirements page. This is where those criteria or project requirements are going to be. Um, everything can be laid out in a section. Um, you can also move sections. So if I want to, you know, put loyalty member management ahead of data science, I can. Um, you can delete entire sections if you want. Um, but this is really where you know, project admins and project stakeholders are going to do a lot of that upfront work of, um, you know, making sure that these requirements are, you know, needed, you know, by the company. Um, you can always add requirements too, um, if you want to. So you've got the option of, um, you know, adding something down here, adding a subsection as well, um, or even deleting. Okay, so and just to add clarity um, to the members listening, these questions are in here already because we cloned an RFP that we had previously built and we've got about eight of them pre-built. But if you have an RFP need for a category we don't have built, um, we can go. We can talk about how we go about building that for you. If you have it um, already built out in an Excel or something, we can get those questions uploaded. If you don't have anything, we can help you gather uh, questions from a variety of sources, but um, this is one that was already built out and that you're able to take advantage of. Yeah, so if you, you know, as you're going through and, you know, looking through the requirements and reviewing them, you can um, click on any one for this pop-out box to slide out. You'll see what the requirement is at the top, the section that it is in. Um, and then if you want to add any tags, so I consider tags to be um, a different way to organize or filter um, requirements. So maybe you have something around, you have different requirements in different sections, but they all relate to user experience or integrations or IT security. Um, you've got a further way that you can, you know, filter just to look at those. And that'll come into play as you're comparing vendors. Um, if you want to start to slice and dice the data a little bit differently, you can add as many tags is needed. You just, you know, start typing one in and I'll delete this for you, Sean. Um, start deleting that in. Oops. And now I've added it and I can, I hit return and I can move on to the next one that I may want to add. Okay. Additionally, if you want to expand or add any descriptive text around um, the requirements, you've got the option to do so here in the description box. And as um, project admins or stakeholders are in here looking at all of this stuff, you can start to rank how important the criteria is to you. So based on a three-star rating, I would say three stars is this is a must-have, um, two stars is a nice to have, and a one star is a okay to have. Um, as more stakeholders and you know project collaborators are ranking, this average ranking will start to show up. Um, based on um, the average of everybody who has scored the requirements, you'll start to see, you know, the one, two, or three stars filled out for that. Okay, and you'll show us how other people can rank them? Yep. Okay. Um, on, also, within, like, each requirement, you can have a chat between you and stakeholders, or, you know, between you and other project collaborators. So, you know, if people are working in different offices, everyone's working from home, you know, if you're, you know, maybe not meeting to go through these all at one time, which isn't really needed um, because you do have this capability, you can say, you know, you can ask questions, you can, you know, someone's like, I don't know why this is important. Um, can you please explain why we want to add this? Um, you know, we don't need this as part of the project. All of that collaboration can happen within this chat feature. Um, as more people start to rank things, so you can see that the project stakeholders in here right now are myself and Sean. Um, neither of us have ranked anything, but if we were to go in and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to do this as a three star, Sean has, you know, done his, you can see all of the people who are within the project and what their rankings have been. And then lastly, the settings tab. This is the response type that you want to set for this requirement for the vendor. So do you want your vendors to um, answer yes, no? 
Do you want them to do an open text response? Do you want a default answer, which is going to be um, core, configurable, third party, NA, or no? So is this you know, core right out of the box? You can use it. Is there some configuration that needs to happen? Does it require an integration with third party? It's not applicable to their solution or no, they just don't do it. So you can set these answer types um, for each requirement um, based on what you guys are looking you know, to get the vendor to respond from. And if, you, if they choose yes, no here as, a, as an option, is the vendor able to add any color to the yes, no? Yes. So on their side, when they're in the opportunity reviewing your requirements, they always have the option of um, answering it and then providing additional text. And um, we actually just added this new custom response type, which I can show you within the project settings. But if you wanted something different than you know, core configurable, or I've actually seen um, if your requirement is written in such a way that a no answer is actually a positive and a yes answer is a negative, you can, you can create that custom response um, and assign a higher score or value to that no rather than the yes. Um, for instance, you know, if you have a requirement that says, you know, your company has not had an IT security incident in the last four years, the positive is a no answer. Um, our default yes, no, the yes is a positive and the no is obviously a negative. Um, so you've got some play now of, you know, assigning correct values to responses and vendors always have the option to, um, add more descriptive text. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I touched on that executive summary page with, um, must haves and requirements being marked as a must have. That is going to be this check mark right here. So uh, you can look at must haves as um, something that is going to be maybe like a non negotiable, or if this vendor doesn't have this capability, we're not going to be able to like move ahead. Um, so you can mark those as must haves. Maybe it's something around integrations with current systems. Maybe it is something around security or, um, you know, user experience, you've got that option of marking things as a must have. And visually, you'll see that um, when somebody has marked something as a must have, it will have gone from this orange color to this red color. Oh, okay. So all project collaborators will be able to see that. Okay. And what's the what's under the three dots on the right? Yes, this that oh. will just expands it so you can click into it that way, or you can click into it from the three dots. If you want to see when you've invited some other stakeholders in to, you know, rank um, requirements, this modify columns will allow you to, you know, look at, you know, maybe you want to add tags if you have tags on here so you can visually see them real quick oh, okay. or who authored it. So if, um, you know, you have somebody maybe that did add another requirement and you want to see you know who that was, you've got that, um, or maybe who updated it. But as you invite stakeholders in, um, because it's just me and you in here, Sean, you will only show up. But if um, you know your coworker or anybody else was in here, I'd be able to click the box and see visually everybody who has ranked requirements. Got it. And that's a good point, uh, a good time to point out that if uh, if I clone an RFP for a member, um, and they want to delete a question. They just, is it my right to say they just check the box and then click yep. the trash can? And yeah. if they want to add a question or a requirement, like you just said, they just click the plus sign uh, under each category, wherever they want it to live. Um, Correct. And then it, then it will live there. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, these, um, the check boxes open these bulk action um, buttons mm -hmm. up at the top. So if you are wanting to assign tags or you want to set multiple questions as the same answer type, instead of going one by one, you can do this um, with the check boxes, either you know, clicking the ones that are needed, or if you want to click an entire section, um, you can move them around between sections. Um, you can assign, bulk assign a tag, 
if you want certain people to rank requirements, you can, if not everybody needs to rank everything. Um, if you wanna change the requirement type, so that is the answer type from the vendor, oops. Um, or if you wanna mark all of these as a must have, you've got op that option too. Or if you wanna bulk delete, you can do that as well. Excellent, it's pretty efficient, okay. Um, if any new sections need to be added, it's just done by add new section, type it in, hit return, and it'll pop to the bottom. And you can reassign or move things around like I showed earlier. Okay. Um, some of the buttons at the top, um, if you have ones, you know, maybe that you've added or that you are ranking that you've assigned to yourself, each stakeholder will have this unique view when they have logged in. So when they click show my requirements, they see their requirements. Um, you can also see show must haves or um, as edits and you know new things are being added, if comments are made, um, little like notification buttons will show up on here. And if you have like unread notifications, um, you can see this show unread only. Okay, that's it for the requirements page. 